Welcome back to United America Project. I am your host, Bobby Bomani. So before we start, I just want to say that we're here to fix these problems, not just to talk about them. We're going to bring us all together so that we can actually take back our government using the will of the people. And we know how to do it. But to start, start by building this channel. So let's get straight into it. Judge denies Oregon's request for restraining order against federal officers. So we have an article here on the NPR. It was just updated this morning. Today is the 25th. So yesterday, on Friday, a judge denies Oregon's request for restraining order against federal officers. So for those of you who have been paying attention to what's going on in Oregon, you know that there have been unmarked federal officers detaining protesters without saying a word. So the Oregon Attorney General requested a restraining order against these federal officers, saying that it was unconstitutional the way they were arresting these protesters. So now first, let's just read this article, see what's going on here. It's just updated at 2.45 this morning, Saturday morning. It says, a federal judge on Friday denied the Oregon Attorney General's request for a temporary restraining order against certain actions by federal authorities in Portland, saying that the state lacked the legal standing to seek that relief. Oregon's Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum filed a lawsuit on July 17th against the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, the U.S. Marshal Service, U.S. Customs, Border Protections, and the Federal Protection Service, Services and their agents. In it, she alleged the federal officers in the city of Portland have acted unlawfully by seizing and detaining Oregonians without probable cause. And she sought a restraining order that would temporarily stop them from using such tactics. She says, we are today seeking the federal court to stop the federal police from secretly stopping and forcibly grabbing Oregonians off of our streets, Rosenblum wrote in a statement. The lawsuit specifically asked the judge to require federal officers to identify themselves and their agencies before detaining any protesters, explained the bias for making the decision or arrest and not arrest individuals without a warrant or probable cause. So now, this is pretty big in, in a few ways because these officers have been given the right to actually detain people without probable cause. Now, I haven't looked into the reasoning behind this. This decision just came down. But we do know that if you have already committed a crime and you were seen by an officer, he doesn't have to read you his rights, your rights because the crime, he has evidence that you've committed a crime. They read you your rights so that you know that you're under investigation so you don't have to say anything that will incriminate you. So for them to say that these officers can go in and, and take these people through probable cause, I'm not sure what precedence this sets and what understanding or what legal precedence they're using to make this claim, to, to make this judgment. I would think that they're going along the lines of something like a RICO case where if you're involved in these protests, then they're able to um, detain you. But still, everything's run by, by the Constitution. You still have your Fifth Amendment right. So if you're detained by a police officer for an, an unlawful reason and there's no probable cause whatsoever, there's no way they can charge you, no matter what you've done. Once you take it to court, the, the case will be dismissed. Say, for example, if you had a, <laughs> 100 pounds of marijuana, this is actually a real case that happened. The guy had a, a, a couple hundred pounds of marijuana in a tractor trailer, and a lady seen, I think she seen something on hanging off the back of his truck that tipped her off to the fact that he had marijuana on him, and um, she called the cops, and the cops followed him, ended up pulling him over. But the cops had never had any evidence of him having marijuana in his vehicle. So when he went to court, his case was there was no probable cause to pull me over. So he actually was released. He, he didn't get his marijuana back, of course, because it was illegal. But just like if you're pulled over for drunk driving, you can get drunk at a bar and leave, and the cop can see you at the bar, and he can see you leave, but he can't pull you over if you're not swerving, if he doesn't have probable cause. So this sets a, a wild precedence that I don't like, but they are doing the right thing because you see these, these protesters, they're not protesting 
they're it's it's that R word. It's the the great boogaloo. You know, they're trying to take down our take down America's government, and that's not what we want. We don't want to destroy our government. We do want to take control of our government. You know, we've gotten so lazy and lackadaisical, and and it's a little deeper than that. You know, especially since the internet is so new, we've just gained this ability to come together and actually use the government the way it was supposed to be used by the people, but we haven't created a culture of doing that just yet, so we're not doing it. But we've been in this rut where we've just elected officials and sat back and allowed them to run whatever agenda they said they were going to run on, and we really don't do much after the election. <laughs> so all that's going to change. You know, that's a part of our program that we're setting up. It's called Community Link. You know, we're going to create a culture of moving our government. You know, it all, it, everything has to be built from culture. You know, the way we naturally move. This is just how our, our, our cities and our communities, this is how they, they move. You know, this is what's expected of them. So we're going to create a culture. So I just want to update you guys on this. Yes, this, this was deemed constitutional. I'm not sure what precedence this sets, and I'm not sure how long it will stand, but something has to be done in Oregon because these kids, they're fighting just for the other half of our government. You know, they think they're, they're fighting for their own revolution, but if you have a revolution and half of the government's on your side, it's not a real revolution. You're, you're, being, you're being misled. So let's rise up. Let's take back our government. Let's not destroy it <laughs> because these are just men and women in positions that we can be in. You know, you can be a mayor. You can be a, a city council member. You can be a governor. You can be a Congress member. It's just one thing right now that we don't have is we haven't solidified a way for us to come together to choose who we want in these positions from within our communities. So that's why people have to go on these huge campaigns and it takes so much money to market and promote a person so that they can get their name out there and people will vote on them. But we're going to change all that. We're going to change the culture. So just a little update on what's going on in Oregon. Still sketchy, but we'll talk about their chances of succeeding, which are slim to none. <laughs> we, we really have to watch what's coming down from up top from the government because that's the, the true plan. You know, it's a twofold plan, bring the pressure from the bottom in order to give the politicians a reason to bring down the laws from up top. So go ahead and um, get ready to take back our government because this is ours. We're not giving it up. Love y'all.